stopped. And his friend looked at him. He took off his cap. He bowed his head quietly. His friend said, well, what's going on here? What's happening here? And they thought, oh, wait a minute. He said, wow, that's the most thoughtful and touching thing you've ever done. I see a hearse going by, a funeral procession. Oh, that was just so touching. You must be the kindest man I have ever seen. And he said, well, yeah, we've been married 35 years. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> the question is, what's going on here? What's going on? What's happening? What's going on? Have you ever been at that place where you're asking what's going on? Do you know what? It's the number one question, or one of the, I should say, number one questions, high, highly rated questions that we ask in life. We always want to know what's going on. We're inquisitive. We're always wondering, what's going on? I want to know. You know, this morning there was a traffic accident on 85, and everybody was, you know, buzzing along, doing fine, until all of a sudden they come across the accident, and they slow down, and there's that what's going on kind of drive, you know, that slows everything down and backlogs traffic for miles, then all of a sudden, and they go by and they still never found out what's going on, but it was the questioning that caused a response to slow down and inquire. I need to know. When it comes to the Bible, when it comes to reading scriptures, have you ever asked, what's going on here? What's really happening? We read a story and we think sometimes it's historical background, is there for us. We think these are nice, lovely Bible stories. We'll pass them on to children. We'll share them. But have we ever stopped to really say, what's going on? Because what makes the Bible alive and living and vibrant for us today is that what's going on is our story. What's going on is that it's speaking to us. What's going on that it's more than just a wonderful anecdote or story of the past or something of history from ancient times, but that it's something powerful for us. And so today, we're looking at a text, we're looking at scripture with the very eyes that say, we want to ask what's going on because we want to learn, we want to know for our own selves. We want to be empowered to be the people of God that we're called to be. We want to ask what's going on because as we discover, as we learn, we find the nurturing, the strengthening that we need for our lives. Let's take a look at one of your favorite, maybe, old time, Old Testament stories. The story of the children of Israel leaving Egypt in Exodus. Exodus chapter 14 unfolds this Wonderful, uh, beautiful story with so many nuances of the children of Israel who've been in slavery for years, now being led by Moses after the strong discourse and battle with the Pharaoh back and forth and all the plagues, you remember those? They were always, that were there and the arguments between Moses and the Pharaoh, let my people go. The Pharaoh finally says in the last plague, I give up, go, go, get out of here. And the children of Israel pack up and they're marching out in Exodus, moving under Moses' guidance with this wonderful sense of knowing we're moving to a promised land. We're going to a wonderful place. And they're just making such great momentum, marching out in joy. I can imagine the children of Israel celebrating this day. Hey, no more making bricks, no more slavery, no more being whipped, no more being beaten. We're out liberated, we're free. Wow, we're moving out. We're gonna go possess the land. The excitement and enthusiasm must have been just at a high vibrational level. They're moving along, making good speed. You can imagine, let's go, hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's get out of Egypt, out of town right now. Let's move as quick as we can. And suddenly, 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 things slow down because scripture says they've come to the Red Sea. They've come to somewhat that seems like a roadblock in their journey. All that great momentum, all that, come on, let's hurry, let's get there, let's move, let's make it to our destination, let's go there. Suddenly it slows down because they're facing something in front of them and this scripture talks about them camping on the seaside, camping, setting up place, setting up home, setting up camp. Have you ever been to that place where 
you have been experiencing such great spiritual momentum. You feel like your spiritual life is growing. Great things are happening. You're really feeling the unfolding and the manifestation of God's blessings within you. You're so excited and you're making great headway. You feel like I'm moving forward. I get this. I got some exciting spiritual truth that's working and burning within me and I'm alive. And all of a sudden you come across your Red Sea, your obstacle. And just when you feel like you're inches away from that great breakthrough, inches away from maybe finding your great success, inches away from discovering your own personal promised land, inches away from coming to that wonderful revelation of what you've been seeking in a deeper truth, and you lose all momentum. You lose all momentum in the process. You see, in the scripture, we find so much symbolism. And what this Red Sea symbolizes for us is that sort of negative consciousness negativity anything that's negative is doesn't mean that it's um, always filled with a no but it is that sense of it's negative in the sense that it's contrary to the positive flow it's the opposite you may find things moving in God's blessings it's the eternal yes and suddenly that negative then is so well it is grounded in that no that eternal no that's always there echoing back and forth saying no 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 not possible not going to happen it's not there for us The sea represents this negative consciousness that they came across this and you'd think that they were so successful in marching out and the miracles of God had made a way for them. Here they are being led by a chosen leader, God sending them, Moses, forward to lead them out. They had this fantastic GPS system, better than what you and I had. They had a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that was showing them the way. Wow, I could use that a couple of times. There's been times when I'm, you know, trying to find my way through traffic and I would love, Lord, just, you know, give me a pillar that leads uh, me through this traffic by day and I love it by night with a glowing fire that says, this is the way to go. Here they were so blessed with all these wonderful attributes. You know what it is? Quite often we forget in today's world where there's so much bombarding our thoughts, we've got so many distractions, don't we? We live in a highly distracted society because there's this, there's that, there's news, there's this. How many of you have seen on Facebook the shower curtain now that's out that's made out of clear plastic but filled with pockets? So while you're showering, you can put in your cell phone, your iPad, your Kindle, your whatever other electronic thing you device you have because you couldn't be separated for the few moments that you're in the shower, heaven forbid. You know, so we are so like, oh, and I'm thinking, well, while you're showering, do you need all of those electronic devices? And someone said, of course, because I multitask. I'm answering the phone. You're answering the phone while you're in the shower and you're, uh, you're looking on your iPad, checking the news and you're reading a book in the Kindle and maybe there's something else going on from some other electronic device. I'm thinking, Wow, we live in a world of incredible distractions, don't we? And we forget. We forget. We forget what we're called to do, what we're called to be. And we allow this negative consciousness to rise within us. And we face the seas. We look at them as obstacles in a negative consciousness because we have forgotten the very promises that say, I will go before you, I will make a way, nothing is impossible, all these wonderful things that are there, and yet we allow something to be our obstacle, and what do we do there? We set up camp. We set up camp in our individual life. We're stuck at this place of a negative consciousness that's there, What would happen if we removed all negative consciousness, all no's? What if you took out every no in the world that came to you? Every no that was ever given to you. You could be a success. Let's remove the no. You could be a great uh, teacher, author, writer. Remove the no. Nothing is impossible when we take out the no out of our consciousness. And could you imagine if they had removed the no? Would they have wasted time in setting up camp? I believe the children of Israel would have just marched right on. Facing the waters, I believe that in that eternal yes, that positive affirmation that we share, that spirit of affirmative, that the waters would have parted for them if they just kept on marching. But they stopped and they camped. The problem is, what happens when we're facing these Red Sea experiences in our lives of negative consciousness? We don't see the place that where we are is the place where God is seeking to be revealed. 
God is seeking to be revealed at the edges of your waters of consciousness, the edges of the waters of your difficulty, of your obstacle, of your Red Sea, however you like to describe it. When you're standing at the edges of that waters and saying, eh, I don't know, what are we going to do? Anybody bring a pontoon boat? Nope. Anyone got a raft? Nope. Anybody got a ship? Nope. Anybody got a boat? Nope. Anyone with an inner tube? Nope. You see how we are? We're just going through the list of all the no's, 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 no's in our lives. And what happens, we don't realize that the place where we are is the place where God says, I want to be revealed. So no matter what your circumstances, no matter where you are, look at every single moment that may seem to you as a moment of negative consciousness and say, this is my moment where God wants to be revealed. And I allow God to be revealed. I don't see this as a negative thing. I don't see it as an obstacle. I don't see it as a barrier. I am marching on. What does the text say that you read today so beautifully? It's explaining to us, I press towards the mark. I move forward. I press on. No matter what may come my way, I press on because I press in this knowing, this positive faith. I haven't forgotten let me tell you this, one of the greatest things you could do is write yourself those to-do lists every morning. Not only just, I need to go shopping, pick up laundries, go to the dry cleaners, make the bed, mow the lawn. How about the to-do list of your spiritual life? That you start out with, say, today, this is what I've got to remember to do. I remember to affirm the goodness of God. I remember to praise in all things. I remember to give thanks in all ways. I remember to express gratitude. I remember to be a person who emulates great love for the world around me. On goes the list, but we must have those reminders in this world of this great distraction, lest we too begin to take up camping at negative consciousness. Now, Moses answered the people who came to him in great terror and fear. What have you done to us, Moses? You've led us here to this a water side here to this great obstacle and the Pharaoh's march on behind us. Wow. What does Moses say? Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance. I love that. You know, people want to throw out these great cliches and phrases and when you're in the midst of fear and doubt and challenge, they want to say, stand firm. And you want to say, stand firm, stand firm. When my whole world is being shaken, I'm in the midst of a spiritual earthquake. Everything is rocking and rolling. Do you not understand that? And all you're saying is stand firm? How on earth do we stand firm in this moment of great chaos? In this moment when we feel like everything around us is like shifting sand we look to the beautiful passages that unfold so symbolically for us the truth that we're called to live every single day and God says Moses raise your staff raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide the waters you see the rod is very symbolizing the very power of the I the I am the very name of God how many of you remember that the name of God is what I am right it is the I within and the am is the revelation of how you're revealing the divine. So God is seen everywhere. Did you not sing this morning, you are the what of God? Face of God, face of God. We could say you are the revelation of God. You are how we see God because the I, the God within you is now revealed as you profess, I am joy. I am peace like a river. I am love. I am all these things. And as we begin to profess it, we are extending that rod out before us, extending, lifting the hand out before us. We are the ones that enable the very presence of God to move then through us, to divide the waters, to separate those waters, to remove those obstacles and get rid of that negative consciousness. Remove it completely from our lives. You see, it's like a wonderful thing is happening as we begin to extend that rod, as we begin to profess, I am. It's like a dynamo. How many of you know what a dynamo is? It's an electric generator. You know, this wonderful electric generator that produces a direct current with the use of a communicator. Dynamos were the first generators capable of delivering power for industry. And it's like when you connect in, when you are a full, walking in this full awareness, I am... I am the divine. 
I'm the presence of God. I am the revelation of God for this world. The world is looking to me to demonstrate the all is possible. So in that we begin like a dynamo. We become connected and the electric charge begins to work within us that we begin to raise a vibrational level of awareness within us that we begin to create this divisiveness within the waters that split and part and move aside. Because when we begin to focus on the power and presence of God in our lives, we're focusing our thought upon this one source, this one power, not two powers. We all know that. We've been studying this in classes over and over again. We talk about it here on Sunday mornings over and over again. We believe there is one power. We said it in the opening today as we welcomed one another. We profess there's one power, not two. And we're not connected to a consciousness of good and evil. We're connected to a consciousness of good. Because evil only exists when you give it power. So we understand there's one power. That's God. If we give all of our power and all of our awareness, all of our focus, all of our thoughts to God, the old good, where is the evil? It dissipates. It falls away. It's no longer there. You see, evil exists because we keep giving power to it. We feed it. We feed that drama. So we understand this over and over again that what happens is within our lives that we are, our bodies are this very center of the divine, the divine within us right here in the core. If you studied science, maybe in high school, junior high, I'll go today, probably first grade in kindergarten. (laughs) We're learning it sooner and sooner as we study the makeup of this wonderful planet called Earth. Inside its core is a wonderful energy source. It is so hot at the very core of the earth. Hotter than Georgia in July. Yes, I'll agree. It is hotter than that. Hotter than the sun, it says. The temperature within the core of this earth, it's an energy force that's vibrant and alive that's actually keeping all things at work and in order in this planet. It's helping to shape the gravity and it is influenced by the tides and the moves of the waters that keep it warm and keep that heat going on in the temperature of this planet. Something within is an energy and so too within our own lives. Something within is an energy and that's the divine power, the divine presence, the one source, the one power. It's there within us. And that inner power within us is something we call upon, we go to, that we center ourselves in at all times. It's interesting that when you read the scriptures, it shares with us that the Lord was causing the east wind to blow. Now, the east wind was coming in as the rod was extended and that rod of the I am, the proclamation in the life. Now, we know in biblical symbolism and all through the Bible and the story that the concept of the east is that which is within. East meaning coming from within. So we think of any references in biblical symbolism, the nuance spiritual writers were writing in a way to evolve a, an education to help it unfold for us with beautiful word pictures of understanding an Easter bl- eastward blowing wind was churning in the waters. Meaning the waters of negative consciousness are now being troubled and stirred by that which is within, that which is within us, our knowing of the divine, of God within our lives. It's now stirring, and boy, oh boy, when we turn to God and you're camping outside of those negative consciousness, those waters, you're camping there, suddenly you know, wow, things begin to stir up. The water begins to change. Your thoughts, your consciousness begin to change. Everything about you begins to take on a new way of thinking and a new shape and form because you have gone within to the power there and everything around you responds to it. Do you know that? The power of God within you is amazing and everything around you responds to it. The power of love in you is amazing and the animals, the world around you, the community responds to it. The power of grace, the power of forgiveness, all that is of God that's within you, that is your eternal energy force that's within you, the world responds. The environment responds. Ooh, don't we? We love it when we respond to someone who's very kind and loving. We respond so gently to them, don't we? 
We love to encounter that kind of uh, engagement where there is someone who is just really full of grace and mercy and compassion and forgiveness. We respond so positively to those kind of things. So what happens here is with what was going on within was changing what is without. What's going on within is changing without. You know, the scripture says, when you pray, go into your prayer closet. Ever wonder where that prayer closet is? You know, I got a closet in the hallway. It's not that one. Mm -mm. I got a closet in the bedroom. No, it's not that either. Where's this prayer closet? It's within. We go within. We go within to that centered place. That place of quiet, we close the door, we find and discover the power and presence of God at work. And when we do, honey, what we're really big on here is you got to come out of the closet. You've been in the prayer closet, it's time to come out of the closet. But when you come out of the closet, you come out transformed. You come out differently than what you were when you were in. That's what coming out of the closet is all about, right? You are now a new person, a new awareness. And so it is spiritually. When you've gone into your prayer closet to pray and you spent that time and you shut the door and you quieted everything else out and you stand firm and you be still as the Spirit of God said to the children of Israel, hush, get in the prayer closet, get in the awareness, get into the consciousness, get into the knowing, get into the place where you say, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know the presence of God is with me. And where I walk, I put my feet on holy ground. I know this. And when you're in that wonderful place and you come out of that presence of the, of the Spirit of God and you come out of that closet, you are transformed and you transform the world around you. Now here's what's interesting as we look at this story. The Egyptians were in hot pursuit coming behind them. The Egyptians speak to us of these obstacles within our life against the blessings that we seek obstacles that come into our pathway and it says in the scripture the egyptians you see today you'll never see again Ooh, wow the obstacles you see today you will never see again wow could you imagine living that kind of life that says when i awaken to the divine within me the power and presence of god within me when i've spent that time in prayer when i've gone into my prayer closet and shut the door when i've spent this quality time that i come out knowing i'm transformed the obstacles that i'm seeing today i'm not going to see again they're removed they're removed you see this is the beautiful thing as scripture says the lord will fight for you we think we got to fight for all the things in ourselves. I got to fight for my finances. I got to fight for my blessing. I got to fight for my health. I got to fight for my justice. I got to fight for equality. I've got to fight, fight, fight. And that's what we. Th- Scripture says the Lord will fight for you. Now, in life, you can work hard or you can work easy. Working hard is taking on all the physical and saying, I'm going to make this happen myself. And working spiritually is I'm simply going to allow the divine to work on my behalf because the goodness of God the generosity of God the presence of God is always at work for your good to unfold it for you that's why you stand is the advice and you be still in the moment of the obstacles because God is doing the work if we allow if we awaken to this we work easy shall we say for we rest in the unfolding of good is there. We only need to be still. For the destruction of the Egyptians symbolizes the natural result of, of a new order of life established within us. So let's just say, look at some obstacles. How about an obstacle of some sickness within the body? And we go into the presence of God and we stand there firm. And we there in our quiet are still. And there we acknowledge the divine at work. And we stand on those wonderful promises that says the healing of God is mine. And God's desire is there. Wow. That Egyptian, that obstacle will never be seen again. Removed. That's called healing. That's called healing. How does healing manifest in our lives? It happens in that wonderful way that the Spirit of God does a work for us, does a work in us when we are willing to submit ourselves and to put ourselves in this place of moving away from camping on negative consciousness to saying, as the text says today, I press forward, I move forward. I'm not camping here. I'm not stuck here. I'm not staying here. I'm moving on. 
Interesting thing, as we look at this text, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell the children of Israel to move. That's right. Tell the children to press on towards the mark, as the text says. Press on and move forward. Come on, get moving. Don't just sit there. And this is one of the beautiful things as we pray and then we move. We say we treat as in a prayer treatment and move our feet. We say we said suddenly we know as we've spent this time in the presence of God and you're in your closet, we move out of the closet. We press forward. We move out from that presence, enabling us to be life changers and world changers. The text says in Exodus, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night the Lord drove the sea back. How beautiful it is that we see in the midst of our night, our darkness, our greatest challenges. It is God at work who is driving back the obstacles, driving back whether they be obstacles in thought or obstacles in a physical realm in a world uh, like represented by the Egyptians. Whether, whatever it may be, God is at work. Do we understand that? then why, should, why don't we live that way? If we understand that God is at work at all times, then there should be never a fear or a doubt. So when you're on the cusp of your greatness, when you're on the feeling like your circumstances are just about ready to unfold goodness, when you're feeling like your success is almost there, don't stop and camp out. Press on, move forward. It's really beautiful because this passage invites us to be like the children of Israel, where we are there at the water's edge, ready to move forward and to step in. And as they did, and Moses is extending the rod, the waters divide. Now here's the thing. What do we see in biblical symbolism and biblical metaphor? Because everything that we're, when we're looking at scripture, we have to look beyond the physical to the spiritual message, right? Looking at the physical, it's just a story, right? A story of children facing the Red Sea. What does that mean for us? The only meaning comes to us is when we look beyond the physical reading, in, beyond the literal, into the spiritual. And here we find that as Moses raised the staff, the waters divide. The waters of this consciousness, the way of thinking are symbolic for in our life. What happens is the waters divide when we begin to profess, I am the divine. That which is of the physical world and the spiritual world now separate and we find clarity in our movement. We can move on dry ground. You see, what's happening is we get all muddled waters, and that's where negative consciousness comes in. We think, God is good, but I don't know where God is right now. And we think about, yes, God blesses, but I don't feel blessing right now. And we get muddled waters in our thinking. Our thoughts begin all mixed in a hodgepodge of stuff, of fear and doubt and faith, all stirred up into one pot. And no wonder it seems like chaotic waters. It seems like it's impossible to work through. Instead, we begin to profess, I know that the divine is within me. I reach out that rod, shall we say symbolically. We say, I am the power and presence of God. I am the revelation of God. And when we do, the waters part. Our consciousness, our thoughts begin to separate. There is the physical that keeps saying you can't. And the spiritual that keeps saying, oh, honey, you can. And it splits and makes a clarity for you to walk through on dry land. We have to put our thoughts beyond what is to track something different or more. We have to move beyond what is and we can look at the waters, we can look at the problems, we can look at the negativity, we can look at the things going on in our world constantly, but we have to look beyond those if we're gonna attract something great within our lives. Because if we're just keeping looking at this problem of the Red Sea and we camp there, we set up our tent, we're stuck. We stopped our momentum. We stopped moving forward. We allow this to be our stopping grounds. We have to begin to say, wait a minute, no, no, I need to look beyond what is so I can attract something different or more to my life. I'm going to look beyond this Red Sea. I'm going to look beyond. I'm going to look to the other side of the Red Sea. I'm going to look to the promised land. I'm going to look to where I'm headed, where I need to be, where I want to go not looking at all these obstacles in the way. I'm looking at the solution or the end result. How wonderful it is when we get that kind of spiritual outlook in life. And say, I'm looking for complete health and wholeness. Oh, our eyes may want to be, oh, but I don't feel well today. My body doesn't feel great and I'm aching and I'm sore. 
Instead, we look beyond and we begin to see that I attract complete health and wholeness and healing is mine. You may look at your bank account and say, there's no God here, that's for sure. That's, that's empty and I'm now frustrated and finances are bad. And we look beyond and we see our financial blessing and our success and know that it's there for us because God is ever watching out for us and ever making a way where there seems to be no way. So what's beautiful here is that we can have to understand this wonderful transformation. Here's our story that we must understand. Here's what's going on, which we must embrace. Number one, stop camping on the shores of negative thought or consciousness. And if you've been camping there, today's your day to pull up stakes, pack up, load up the campfire gear, put away the sleeping bags, Come on, it's time to move on because your blessing is just there on the other side. What we're understanding of what's going on here is that this passage is telling you that we're called to move forward even when we come against obstacles. What do you do? You keep moving forward. Oh, but there's a wall there. There's a barrier. There's a, a, a Red Sea there. I can't move forward. Oh, but the Spirit of God is calling you in this text. Don't stop. Press on towards the goal. Press on towards the mark. Press upward to the, the call of God in Christ Jesus in this full awareness and consciousness. And know that in all these things, when you do this, you will be the one who divides the waters, separates the waters, and begins to separate with clarity that you now begin to move forward onto dry ground. Know that this is what's happening, and this is what's happening for you today. This is what's happening for you right now if you'll allow it your story is exodus 14 your story is the living bible unfolding today your story my story our story is seen right here and for the promises there if we will press forward with great faith and not allow anything to hold us back blessings are in store amen